Hi, and welcome to the Stock Scores Market Minutes for September 26, 2016. This week's topic, profit clumps. Trading profits do not come consistently and evenly. You don't make the same amount every day if you're day trading or the same amount every month if you are swing trading. There are times when there is little trading action and where you do find action, there's also poor follow through on those trades. There's also times when trading is easy and it seems like you're the smartest trader in the world, profits are significant. You have to be able to grind it out during the slow times and be there for when the big profits come in the good times. One of the keys is to watch volume. It is a good indication of market action. The lower the volume on the indexes, the less action there will be. Lower your risk tolerance when the market is slow, when it feels like nothing's going on, and then increase it when the market is easy and things are working well, your success rate is high, that is when it is time to work hard. All right, let's get into this week's action. A lot of the problem with the market the last week or, well, actually most of September, but certainly the last week in particular, is just the lack of direction. We had diminishing volatility there, and then we had that big jump up after the Fed, and then no volatility after that and then a bit of a sell-off on Friday. So the market's been all over the place in the last week. It doesn't really know what it's doing. It's not a trending market. And I think most traders have been sitting on the sidelines afraid to act because of the uncertainty. This chart is, I guess, a neutral chart, but it's also the kind of chart where you just hate to trade because it's not easy. It doesn't have a trend. It doesn't even have a lack of sideways you know, or, or a lack of volatility. It's not like back here where we had at least some sideways trading so individual stocks could do well. The market's all kind of whipsaws right now and that makes it tough. On the longer term chart in the S&P 500, you can see that the upward trend line is still holding. Uh, could break, we've got to watch for that. Uh, certainly when you get down to that trend line, you're gonna get volatility around it and we could see a breakdown soon. For now, this is still a bullish trend, but in the last two months, pretty sideways, so you could call it neutral in that regard, kind of depends on your time frame. If you're holding as an investor longer term, yeah, it's bullish. It's been bullish for all of 2016. But if you are sort of a medium term trader, that's the sideways trading that makes it a little bit difficult. On the Russell 2000, also we have that upward trend in place. A little bit better performance this week on the small caps. I do think they want to get back up into here where they're going to get stuck. Call that a bullish trend. On the Canadian market, short term, actually pretty good here, largely because oil was strong until Friday. And you can see what happened on Friday. We had a bit of a sell-off, uh, and I'll show you that chart in a moment. And that took the TSX back down. No coincidence, it hit that level of resistance where it got stuck. Sellers came in, the trend had gone a little bit parabolic, took it back to the trend line. Should bounce, but we'll see a lot of that will depend on oil, and oil looks a little uncertain, as we'll talk about in a moment. Longer term chart, much like the S&P, in an upward trend, but in that medium term sideways trading, which is a bit of a grind through the summer. It hasn't been fun trading during the summer. It hasn't been easy. You had to grind it out. Eventually, we're going to get a break out of this sideways trading. That's what tends to happen. You get directional moves after sideways trading. So after every period of calm, boring, lackluster trading, you get strong periods of trend. We just got to wait for the signal to tell us which way the trend is going to go. TSX Venture consolidating after considerable gains. It's in a pennant pattern there. If we break up out of the pennant, continuation of the upward trend. If we break down out of the pennant, that will be a trend reversal from a falling top. That will be a bearish signal. So watch that. I can't tell you what's going to happen. I can tell you probability, given that the trend is up into the pennant, more probable we'll get a break to the upside, but not improbable that will get a break to the downside. So that's what you have to watch for. TLT, which is of course the US Treasury ETF. When this one goes down, interest rates go up. We saw here some down price action over the last three weeks. When the Fed didn't raise rates, well, look at that. The T-bonds went up. The market saying, okay, well, maybe it'll be December. I mean, they just keep pushing it down the road, of course. But as it stands right now, upward trend line holds, pardon me, upward trend line holds, and therefore you have to continue to be bullish, but it's dancing along that trend line. If it breaks here, 
That means bond prices are falling. That means interest rates are going up and that'll be bad for stocks, I believe. US dollar, narrowing volatility. You can see it's getting into this tight range. Really, it comes down to what is the Fed going to do? Is the Fed going to raise rates? You'll see this break to the upside because the US dollar will be more desirable to own with higher interest rates in the US. If they keep pushing uh, that interest rate decision down the road and never raise rates, well, we could see this break down and this move lower. I think more probably we move out to the upside, but until we get a break from that pennant, we don't know. So watch the chart. Check this chart every week and watch for a break out of that pattern. Here's the gold chart. Again, also highly dependent on what interest rate policy is. I didn't draw that line very well, but you get the idea. We've bounced off the trend line there, there, and again here. We're in this sideways, sort of slightly downward sloping channel, which is kind of like a flag. We had to move up into it. Is it going to hold this and continue higher? That would imply that there continues to be accommodative Fed action. If we break down through this, then the market is saying, hey, we think the Fed is finally going to start to raise rates and maybe not get so much stimulus from central banks. I don't know what's going to happen again. Let's trust the chart. Wait for this trend line to be broken or wait for an upside breakout from this channel. Upside breakout, that's positive for gold. Downside move, that is negative. Oil. Had a little rally here early this week. Kind of felt pretty good in the oil market. I think a lot of people got suckered because the downward trend line has not been broken. Again, I draw that poorly. I gotta learn how to draw with this freehand pen. Um, but you get the idea. There's the downward trend line. We rallied up to it, rallied up to it, got stuck and rolled over on Friday. That points to lower prices. Now, until that downward trend line is broken, don't be a bull on oil and energy stocks right now. Here's how you play it. I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know that if this gets broken, we're probably going higher. If this support line gets broken, we're probably going to test this support. So let the market tell you what to do. For now, I would say I'm on the bearish side because we have falling tops here. That is a sign of bearishness. We are below a downward trend line. That is a sign of bearishness. We are consolidating. By that, I mean volatility diminishing over time towards support. That is a bearish signal. So could it break to the upside? Sure it could but it's not probably what will happen. Ultimately, we wait for the signal. The fear index had a little rally last week, kind of tailed off again this week. Market taking out a lot of that fear, but this can percolate and rise up again anytime. So watch for it to have a bump up that shows that there's some fear coming in the market. Right now, relative calm. So my outlook then, neutral on US stocks long-term, bearish short-term. Canadian stocks, same thing. Gold. I've changed my rating here a little bit because gold has been able to hold that upper trend line. So neutral on both time frames. Neutral long term on oil, it is trying to base, but bear a short term because it's below that short term downward trend line. The buyers seem to be on strike this week, and that is uh, showing us that the charts are losing momentum, but they've not suffered a strong negative signal yet. Oil tried and failed to break its short term downward trend. Gold held its upward trend. So we have two different things going on with oil and gold, but gold is dancing on that uh, trend line like the edge of a knife. Volatility is increasing, but fear is still not major. So it's a relatively complacent board market where the buyers don't want to act. Let's get into this week's trade of the week. This is a stock that I picked up right here. This is a 10-day, uh, 30-minute chart. So I have a strategy called the Stock Scores Simple Swing Strategy. It looks for abnormal behavior on a short-term intraday chart. There you see abnormal volume. There you see abnormal price. Uh, feature that in my trade scores daily trade alerts where I send out an alert to your cell phone. Picked it up right there. Sold it right here. Why? Well, there's the trend line. And notice how the trend went parabolic to the upside. So I put a tight stop in there thinking it would probably pull back to the trend line. It did do that. Got out of that trade at 269. Came back to the trend line. I probably should have bought it there. I failed to do that. My mistake because it did bounce nicely off of the trend line. Looks to me likely now that it's going to do a little consolidation pattern in here. Still has some legs, however. If it can consolidate and then break, might want to trade it again. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes. Please tell me if you like this video by clicking on the like button. If you have a comment, I'm happy to look at all of those. I always read every one. And uh, if you like what we're doing here at Stock Scores, please subscribe to the channel. Have a great week in the market.
and trade well.